Hello everyone, this is Paleo Nerd here with a new creature profile. This is where I cover a lesser known prehistoric animal and bring it into the spotlight by highlighting its discovery, classification, appearance, diet, environment, behavior, and its extinction, as well as any appearances it has made in pop culture. Throughout the winter, I'm going to be covering prehistoric animals that lived in the polar regions. So today, we'll be covering one from the Arctic, the dwarf Tyrannosaur Nanuxaurus. This genus consists of a single species, Nanuxaurus hoglundi, which translates to Hogland's polar bear lizard. The genus name is derived from the Inupiaq word for polar bear, Nanuk, while the species name honors Forrest Hogland for his career in earth sciences and philanthropic efforts. It is known from the Kaikak Tegosiak quarry of the Prince Creek Formation in northern Alaska, which has been dated to the middle of the Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous period, about 71 to 68 million years ago. Current estimates place the animal at a length of 5 to 6 meters or 16 to 20 feet long, a height of around 1.5 to 2 meters or 5 to 6 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of around 1.5 tons making it the smallest of the Tyrannosaurines, as it is almost five times smaller than T. rex. The holotype specimen of Nanuxaurus, the partial skull of an adult individual, was unearthed in 2006 in North Slope Borough, near the northern tip of Alaska. The remains were originally classified as a species of Gorgosaurus, and later of Albertosaurus, until it was classified as a distinct genus in 2014 by Anthony Fiorillo and Ronald Tykoski. Nanuxaurus belongs in the Tyrannosauride superfamily, specifically the family Tyrannosauridae, which consists of the more derived Tyrannosauroids and consists of two main subfamilies, Tyrannosaurinae and Albertosaurinae. Despite being initially classified as a species of Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurine, the robust nature of Nanuxaurus and a distinct ridge on its head indicates it was most closely related to Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Shuchang Tyrannus. As such, Nanuxaurus belongs in the subfamily Tyrannosauridae and is its smallest member. As stated before, Nanuxaurus was surprisingly small for a Tyrannosaur, so much so that I'm surprised they didn't name it Nanotyrannus, as it is really the closest real-life equivalent to the former genus. Other than its size, it has the typical appearance of a Tyrannosaurine, with a large head with bone-crushing jaws, small arms with two-fingered hands, long legs equipped for running, and a long tail to help it maintain its balance. Finally, Nanuxaurus is believed to have had a thick coat of filaments to help keep it warm in its relatively cold environment. Nanuxaurus was a carnivore, and likely the top predator in its ecosystem, rivaled in size only by a large unnamed species of troodont. It likely fed primarily on juvenile specimens of the Ceratopsian Pachyrhinosaurus, as well as the dubious Hadrosaur, closely related to Edmontosaurus. Other animals it coexisted with include a possible Maastrichtian species of Dromaeosaurus, an unnamed Ornithomimid, and even possibly a Therizinosaur based on footprints that found in Alaska. Although it was still warmer than it is today, Alaska was quite cold during the late Cretaceous, mainly due to its much higher latitude. As such, it often got cold enough to snow, and seasons consisted of months of constant sunlight followed by months of near total darkness. As a result, food would have been limited, the most likely explanation for Nanuxaurus's smaller size. While the large herbivores would have coped with this by migrating south during the winter, predators like Nanuxaurus stayed up north all year round, likely to avoid competition with larger predators like Albertosaurus, which was over one and a half times bigger than Nanuxaurus. 
This is where Donuxaurus's small size would have become an advantage, as while larger predators would starve to death during the winter, the smaller carnivores could simply take advantage of the much smaller animals that also did not migrate. In this way, Nanuxaurus was able to not only survive, but thrive where other larger predators could not. Although not much unique is known about Nanuxaurus in regards to behavior, we can assume many things based on other Tyrannosaurs in the environment it lived in. First, Nanuxaurus would have needed very acute senses in order to hunt prey during the cold, dark winters. Luckily, Tyrannosaurs are known for having excellent vision as well as a sense of smell that would put a bloodhound to shame. Its close relative T-Rex had vision better than a hawk's, and Nanuxaurus' vision may have been even better than that in order to spot prey in near total darkness. Although it was small, it was heavily built, and its bite was likely just as lethal as its larger cousins, able to easily crush bone. This was important, as the small arms meant that Nanuxaurus relied almost entirely on its jaws to capture its prey and it was perfectly adapted for precisely that. Its skull is thick and broad with multiple attachment sites for its massive jaw muscles, which were additionally supported by its incredibly muscular neck. This made it a formidable predator, and fossils of other Tyrannosaurus indicate that Nanuxaurus may have hunted in groups to take down larger prey although it is unknown if these were family groups or merely the result of mobbing behavior similar to modern day Komodo dragons. Tyrannosaurs are believed to be among the most intelligent non-avian theropods, so the former isn't completely unlikely. Even if it did hunt cooperatively, chances are that many interactions between individuals were far from friendly. There are many, many, many Fossil discoveries which point to frequent in-species fighting amongst tyrannosaurs. Many of these wounds show signs of healing, and nearly all are on the facial area, which is believed by many paleontologists to have been quite sensitive to touch in tyrannosaurs. This face biting is likely the result of territorial disputes or fights over mates, and fossil evidence shows that these encounters were usually not fatal as many show evidence of healing, and some even have wounds from several different encounters. While no direct evidence of these behavior is seen on the single partial skull that Nanuxaurus is known from, it's not too much of a leap to assume that this polar tyrannosaur did this as well. That's really all we can deduce about its behavior and lifestyle for now. And from the small amount of fossils we have, it seems that Nanuxaurus is very well adapted for its environment, being able to survive in cold environments that its larger contemporaries could not. So, how did it go extinct? The Kaikak Tagosiak quarry Nanuxaurus is found in only ranges until about 68 million years ago about 2 million years before the KBG mass extinction that would wipe out all non-avian dinosaurs. And although it is possible that Nanuxaurus was wiped out by the asteroid, it is best to stick with what we have, and assume that Nanuxaurus went extinct around 68 million years ago. So how did it go extinct then? As a top predator, the most likely ways that Nanuxaurus could have gone extinct are 1 the extinction of its prey, 2. New prey animals it is unequipped to hunt, 3. The arrival of a new predator that is more efficient, 4. A dramatic change in climate, or a combination of any of them. So which is it? Did some major catastrophe wipe out its main source of food and cause it to starve to extinction? Did bigger, stronger tyrannosaurs move north and take over its niche? or did it simply get too warm for it to survive? It's likely we'll never know for sure, although the most likely explanation is that some change in its environment was too drastic for it to adapt to, whether it got colder or warmer. It's possible that once the environment changed, Nanuxaurus's specialized nature became its greatest weakness. 
Now, many of Nanuksaurus's appearances in media are from when it was thought to be a species of Gorgosaurus, mainly its appearance in the documentary film March of the Dinosaurs and in Nova's Arctic Dinosaurs special. Other than the misclassification and the fact that the animal is oversized, the March of the Dinosaurs depiction is actually somewhat accurate. It even has a covering of filaments as well as a more tyrannosaurine like skull. However, Nova's Nanuxaurus is, well, look at it. I really don't think I need to explain. It also appears in the Walking with Dinosaurs movie, again as Gorgosaurus, mainly through the main antagonist Gorgon. For Gorgosaurus, it looks pretty accurate, but again, it is supposed to be Nanuxaurus, which is a Tyrannosaurian rather than an Albertosaurian like Gorgosaurus. So, once again, it is inaccurate. There is, however, another version of the film called Walking with Dinosaurs Prehistoric Planet 3D, boy that just rolls off the tongue, which corrects it to Nanuxaurus, although it still resembles Gorgosaurus rather than the real animal. It has also more recently appeared in the series Dino Dana, which is the first show to feature the animal accurately. Finally, it made a brief appearance in a documentary about Tyrannosaur evolution called T-Rex, an Evolutionary Journey. Hopefully, this amazing animal will be featured more in the future, albeit more accurately. Well, that wraps up this video on Nanuxaurus. It is quite short, since the animal is currently only known from the holotype specimen. However, you can expect me to cover many of the animals it shared its world with, and the Prince Creek Formation may even get a video on its own later on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this latest video and that you learned something new today. My next video is currently planned to be the scientific analysis of Jurassic Fight Club Episode 4, Bloody's Battle, and the next creature profile will be about the Arctic Troodont, and the next one after that will be about Lustrosaurus. Requests are also more than welcome for future episodes. That's all for today, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with another video.